my conversation on healing and how music and dance plays an intricate role in healing in our community. Lincoln Park Music Festival, a celebration of spirit and, spirit and dance, the healing begins. First, I had to look up what is healing. Healing is the process of restoration to make sound whole and to have victory over an undesirable condition. Then I had to look up healing through music and dance. Music and dance affects every cell in our body, instantly creating a healing. A person's attitude, emotional state, perception of the world is changed through music and dance. The lyrics of a song creates hope and help people deal with their difficulties. They both transform a person's outlook and way of being. Albert Einstein said, nothing happens till something moves. Music and movement. Music and dance historically has been used as a method of healing. When you combine the two, one is transformed and they're touched, moved, and inspired. Growing up in Newark was an amazing experience for me. I remember I started off by singing in the choir. I was a young kid singing in the choir. And I could remember, I went to a Baptist church, and I could just remember, once the choir started singing and we started rocking, my feet started tapping, the whole church just became alive. You know, people started singing and shouting. I went to a Baptist church, but sometimes I think I went to a holiness church because once it started, <laughs> you know, it was on. And I grew up having an appreciation for jazz, gospel, R&B, and my love of music, house music, dance music. And I remember early Saturday mornings watching Soul Train. I couldn't wait till I think it came on at 12 o'clock on Saturdays, watching Soul Train. And I could get to see some of my favorite artists, one being Chaka Khan. And I, it was just an amazing experience. And one of my favorite, favorite, favorite things that I loved about Soul Train was the Soul Train line. Now you know, I, could, I know most of you in the audience or some of you in the audience remember the Soul Train line. As a matter of fact, if you go to any of our personal events, somewhere <laughs> in the middle of the party, we start our Soul Train line. Everybody <laughs> starts getting ready to get down and go down that line. What an amazing experience. Then, my appreciation for music was amplified, and this, this is when it really exploded when, it, when I hit the dance floor. You know, there was a club in Newark called the Zazza Bar. And I went from being in church, singing at the choir, to the DJ becoming my preacher and conductor. And so, so I went from the pulpit to the dance floor to the DJ booth. And it was an amazing experience. I just could remember, it was the lyrics, it was the songs. You know, the DJ playing, last night a DJ saved my life. Last night a DJ saved my life with a song. It was just the lyrics, and it just moved and trans transformed me. Remember back in the day, you know, my experience was wonderful in growing up, watching television, the Jackson Five, good times. You know, it was that famous Ernie Barnes picture that was uh, on the wall in good times. They lived in the projects, but they were having just a wonderful family experience. And music during that time through the 60s and the 70s really correlated with what was going on in those times. And one of my favorite male artists was Marvin Gaye. He made this album, What's Going On? You know, and the lyrics, War Is Not The Answer, For Only Love Can Conquer Hate. It was one of the best albums that was ever produced because music had a correlation to what was going on and it helped to uplift our people no matter what was happening. There was a spirit of togetherness. You know, through all the events, whether it was barbecues, family outings, block parties, our core values of a family was always there and was pulled together. And it was just part of what really crafted my experience. You know, I use the term Yamoja. Yamoja is the first principle of Kwanzaa, it means unity. Unity was always present in everything that was happening when I was growing up. The power of music and movement. Music is ve has been very powerful for me in my life. You know, um, 
when I hear a song or if I'm present to the music, what happens is that it transforms me, transform me, and it, my body becomes the instrument as I move and I dance. And it's been, music has just been very powerful in my life. I just want to give you a little history, some context about the history of music in the city of Newark. Newark has, been, has had a long history of being the bedrock of entertainment and social life. From the 30s through the 50s, you know, in an area called Lincoln Park, that was called the coast, and it was the mecca for jazz. People like Sarah Vaughan, Billie Holiday, even uh, comedians like Red Fox, and even our own James Moody performed in the coast. I grew up mostly in the 70s and the 80s. And in the 70s, there was Motown. And some of the best prolific writers came out of that area, one being, I call him, one of the greatest poets, Smokey Robinson. Then, but where I really blossomed was in the dance clubs in the, in the 80s and the 90s, mostly the 70s and 80s. There was Zazabar, Shanique's Docs, Club Sensation. And as I left to go off to college, there became an intergenerational shift in the late 80s to present time. There was a shift in the change of lyrics and the audiences, and even a shift in the whole city of Newark. Uh, there was an onset of hip hop, rap, and the reemergence of R&B later on. When I came back from school, there were no more clubs. We didn't have the same family outings that we used to have. Everything had just kind of diminished. And I realized that there was a need. There was a need for us to really get back to where, how when I was growing up in Newark, where everything was about family and togetherness, and these are just pictures from the 30s, 25, 1925 to the 50s, the Motown era. And that's probably me somewhere dancing at the Zazibar. <laughs> you know, um, the vision. I was afforded an opportunity when I came back home to take all of my life experiences and pull them all together. And I, I went to work at a nonprofit organization called Lincoln Park Coast Cultural District. Lincoln Park. Has, is really has impacted the community in the area of South Broad Street in Newark. At Lincoln Park, I was able to bring all of those experiences together. I was able to work through the program we had and we created the Lincoln Park Music Festival. Now, I don't know how many of you have ever been to the festival, but it's an amazing experience. The Lincoln Park Music Festival became the catalyst it created a new reality for the people. That void that was missing, we were able to bring that back. All those family values and that intergenerational experience was able to bring that back. We bridged the old with the new. We brought the intergenerational connections. And then we created the main ingredients that was going to help us to heal our community. Music. We celebrate jazz, gospel, house, and hip hop all generational music. And it just really works. Dance goes with it. Any, if you go to the gospel, they shout, they dance. You know, you think jazz, they dance. All of it has dance. But we also know that food is an integral part of our experience. So we included food and wellness. We wanted to educate our people to know that the importance of eating well, taking care of yourself, the conversations just came. So this has been really an impactful experience. We have over 40 to 50,000 people that attend the Lincoln Park Music Festival each year. And the one amazing thing that I like to boast about the festival is that we, have no, we had no incidents. With all those people in attendance, there's no fights, nothing happens. The people govern themselves. It's something that was needed in our community and it's a mainstay. Not only do people come from the region, but people come from overseas, they come from everywhere to attend this festival because music and dance has a way of really helping people to really transcend to another place. Now I'm just going to leave you with two more slides. All this happens over three days. People are elated, excited, they feel good, love and family. But my question to you when it comes about sustainability and the challenge, how do we sustain that togetherness, that positive energy when the music stops? What, we, what do we do here in the city of Newark when the music stops? 
Now we have 362 more days. And what do we do when we have 362 versus the three? Do we bottle it up? What do we do? Well, I'm going to leave you with some thoughts that I have. First, in moving forward, we need to find more partners and more people that understand how this music and dance is impacting our community. We need more support. And two, we don't need to have just a program that happens just for three days. We should have more programs that, have, that are uh, accessible to the community and to people so that this same feeling that we have for three days with no incidents in Newark can maybe happen the other 362 days. So I'm leaving you with the charge that we've begun the healing at Lincoln Park, but I'm leaving you with the charge. Let's continue the momentum.